Hi everybody, Dr. Deed Harrison here, President and CEO of Chiropractic Biophysics Seminars and Technique, and I'm also President of Chiropractic Biophysics Nonprofit, our spine research organization. Uh, if you've been watching these videos, you know that what I am personally doing is I'm going through each publication from CBP nonprofit researchers, not just myself, but collectively as an organization, and we're putting these in a video format. We're going point by point through the actual peer-reviewed publication, and what this is for is for two purposes. Number one, for the CBP Diplomate program, the online component. And also, it's so we gain more traction and awareness for the work that we're doing. Uh, short versions of these videos will be on our YouTube channel, Chiropractic Biophysics YouTube, and you can watch excerpts out of these uh, different publications. But the full video, where we go through the actual whole uh, peer-reviewed paper from start to finish, that's only exclusively on the CBP Diplomate uh, website for uh, the Diplomate program with the ICA and also this will be hosted uh, by my good friend Dr. Dave Cruz through web exercises at webex.com. You'll be able to watch these same videos for continuing education credits uh, if you so choose. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to dive into this week's uh, publication. Hi everybody, Dr. Deed Harrison here. In this CBP nonprofit video presentation. We're going to go through uh, a, a case out of Dr. Jason Yeager's office in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. This was published in the British Journal of Medicine and Medical Research. Uh, this is, in fact, a PubMed journal. It is volume 11, number seven, pages one through nine. And this was uh, published in 2016 by Dr. Jason Yeager, Paul Oakley, Dr. Chris Coloca, and myself, Dr. Deed Harrison. Uh, it's non-surgical reduction of thoracic hyperkyphosis in a 24-year-old music teacher utilizing CBP technique. First and foremost, uh, when we talk about the thoracic curvature of hyperkyphosis, that begs the question of what is a normal kyphosis? Well, there's different uh, thoughts and different studies in the literature, but what we're going to use is our foundational uh, CBP modeling studies and then our average value study. Uh, the normal thoracic kyphosis is approximately 40 degrees when you do T2 to T10. Uh, why do we report T2 to T10 instead of T3 to T10? Well, it depends on what you can see on the thoracic lateral x-ray. If I were to use T3 to T10, we get 33 to 37 degrees. If I use T2 to T10, I go up to 40 degrees because I've gone up a segment and there's more curve in the thoracic spine at the top. If I use T2 to T11, I'll get in the mid 40s. And if I use T1 to T12, in fact, uh, it might actually go into the upper 40s. Uh, we have uh, identified that the thoracic kyphosis should be uh, close to an elliptical configuration, meaning I'll have more curve at the top. And then as I get into the lower thoracic spine, I have a straightening of the thoracic kyphosis at T10, T11, and T12. So in fact, the mid and upper thoracic kyphosis have increased curvature. Of interest, we are the first group to model that with the thoracic spine. We did that in 2002 and 2003. Uh, the ideal spine model that we reported was in spine in 2003, and the average uh, of value data, elliptical modeling, and then average value alignment of 80 normal individuals was this. If I have a 10 degree increase, I have a 13.5 times risk of uterine prolapse. That's huge. Each degree increase carries a 1.35 times risk of having this. So if I incrementally increase this linearly, it becomes a huge statistical risk or odds ratio, if you will. This indicates that thoracic hyperkyphosis is associated with uterine prolapse. This is a very important issue to consider. So if you've got a young, healthy female that has a very large thoracic kyphosis and loss of the lumbar curve, you better start explaining the long-term consequences of this. 
Now, can you prove that this will happen in her? No, but what you can do is you can give her an evidenced, informed perspective. And that's the deal out there. There's people go that, that go, oh, there, there's no evidence for that. You know what? I'm so tired of hearing that. What, what it means is they don't like the evidence that's available because it doesn't fit their agenda. And their agenda is to make sure that patients can't get corrective care uh, because for whatever reason, they, they don't want to see it paid for. They don't want to see this, that, or the other thing. But you know, when you start understanding this stuff, you start to go, good Lord, we want to do something about these spine disorders to see if we can change people's health and well-being. I mean, imagine that. Imagine if we could just stop one out of 10 women from having uterine prolapse by correcting the thoracic kyphosis. That would be amazing. Now that needs to be investigated, right? Back to this, the, the Cotto study, and uh, her name is pronounced Cotto, Deborah Cabo, uh, Cotto. Uh, Dr. Uh, Cotto actually spoke for us in 2017 at the CBP annual, and she went through her thoracic uh, uh, deformity investigations and her sagittal plane investigations that her and her team and colleagues have done. Uh, she's a brilliant uh, medical doctor, a brilliant speaker, and she was in fact a, a very, very welcoming uh, individual. It was a, an honor to have her uh, present at the CBP annual conference. Uh, this comes from her 2009 uh, publication, her and her colleagues, out of the Annals of Internal Medicine, uh, 2009, volume 150, number 10. This is a prospective cohort of 610 Caucasian females in their sixth to ninth decade of life. Uh, thoracic hyperkyphosis without fracture was statistically looked at in terms of its relationship to uh, the timing of death. So in terms of death rates, they assessed thoracic kyphosis via a flexible ruler, but they also had uh, analysis of fracture on interventional investigations on imaging, uh, which is uh, interesting that they did not uh, you know, report the magnitude of kyphosis on imaging, but they did uh, look at the uh, flexible ruler. Uh, vertebral uh, fractures were identified by morphometry and mor mortality was assessed with a 13 and a half year follow-up. So this is a very good paper, prospectively following people for 13 and a half years. Each standard deviation increase in thoracic kyphosis carries with it a 1.14 times increased rate of death. Now let's this is an awesome case, right? We've got uh, proper pain disability uh, scales. And also look at this, the prelateral uh, thoracic x-ray, 65 degrees. This is a very large thoracic deformity. And if we look at uh, the studies that I uh, went through in the introduction, she's at risk of this uh, in, in terms of her long-term um, aging, she's at risk of some of these things we discussed. Number one, chronic pain and impairments, yep. Yeah. Uh, number two, uterine prolapse. If she continues to develop like this, she would be in a high-risk category. It doesn't mean she's going to get this, but the odds are more likely than not. And then, of course, she's at the rate or the magnitude of curvature of early death statistically. Uh, this is not a good situation. So we, we need to talk to her about these things and we're not trying to scare her, we're trying to advise her. These are some uh, you know, probabilities, means it's more likely than not to occur. And 51% is a probability. 49% means it's more likely than not, not to occur. But I'm, an odds ratio tells me it's more likely to occur okay, in this situation. CBP treatment methods, uh, mirror image exercises, uh, three times, uh, three sets with 15 reps uh, for the majority of them, meaning 45 repetitions per session. Uh, we did uh, cervical extension exercises uh, with a TheraBand and uh, a, uh, a bungee cord from Metacords, uh, head retraction exercises, and then thoracolumbar extensions uh, on the uh, TheraBall to strengthen and improve stability and improve alignment, right? Also the universal traction system is what was used for thoracic hyperkyphosis traction. And then mirror image postural adjustments. Here's the exercises shown. And you can see the TheraBall, 
and we're doing some core strengthening, and then we're doing the uh, prone thoracolumbar extensions uh, to improve thoracic kyphosis, placing the arms out in extended position, asking them to retract the scapular area and extend the mid uh, lumbar, or excuse me, the uh, mid thoracic spine down into the thoracolumbar junction. And then shown here is the mirror image exercise, full spine, doing thoracic extensions and translations, but also translating the rib cage anterior and flattening out the thoracic curve. The reason we're doing this is this person had anterior head translation and a flattening of the cervical curve simultaneously with the thoracic hyperkyphosis. They can couple together. Uh, mirror image traction was done three to four times per week in the universal, uh, universal traction system. And here is what the full spine traction setup looked like preliminarily. Uh, this is distraction with translation with extension in the neck. And then uh, outcome of reducing the thoracic curve from the 60s down into the 40s, which is normal. It also improved chronic pain intensity. Uh, we suggest that con continued investigation into the effectiveness of thoracic spine extension traction for the treatment of hyperkyphosis needs to be continued. We've been on a path of doing multiple cases and case series of this. And if you watch these CBP nonprofit research presentations, you'll see many of these case reports, and then you'll eventually see a systematic literature review of the case reports and you will see uh, our randomized trial of this. But we started this process uh, as early as the uh, early 2000s, looking at can we improve thoracic kyphosis in cases, and then we got reinvigorated in this in the, the uh, late 2000, uh, uh, excuse me, the uh, uh, 2010 to 2020 era. Uh, so uh, this particular case adds uh, a little bit to the literature on this specifically for CBP technique of case report managing of thoracic hyperkyphosis. The good parts of this case is we have long-term follow-up. We In the paper itself, we have a nine-month follow-up. Uh, in the actual presentation here, I was able to put in the four-year follow-up uh, that was missing from the uh, publication. We have improvement of chronic moderate intensity back pain, neck pain, headaches, etc to mild uh, intermittent uh, types of pain with one out of 10. And this is what makes this a very good case and a very successful case. We have long-term follow-up showing that these improvements were maintained. Hopefully you enjoyed this presentation. Till next time, I'm Dr. Deed Harrison. What we would like everybody to consider is if you are a patient out there and you have any type of spine disorder, deformity, you have chronic pain syndromes, etc. Why not seek out a properly trained chiropractic biophysics doctor of chiropractic? A CBP trained chiropractor, they've had hundreds of hours of extra training with me and my team in these types of spine deformities and disorders that we talk about in this, these video series. Our group is one of the, the most respective groups from a research uh, perspective and publication perspective that there is in chiropractic and conservative care. We work with other providers. We work with uh, pulmonologists, cardiologists. We work with surgeons from an orthopedic neuro neurosurgeon perspective, etc. We have a great team and a great network of referrals where we can co-manage the disorders uh, together. We also know when not to treat somebody, but you, the, the issue is most of the cases are treatable and correctable when we use evidence-based chiropractic biophysics interventions. There's no need for people out there to continue to suffer with spine deformities that affect their health. Why don't you out there seek a CBP trained chiropractor? Go to cbppatient.com and look up our trained providers that are all over the world, okay? And you'll find out that we're very skilled as a group of providers at A, identifying what's wrong and B, at managing your unique uh, needs and your spine condition. The other thing is for chiropractors, look here. We want to get you on board with us. Yes, it requires a lot of training. We have 15 courses 
that we require you to do for advanced certification that covers 180 to 190 hours of training. And then we have an online program where we do 240 hours of online training where we cover the ins and outs of our research and what that means and equates to clinical practice and interpretations. Okay, so we go through the actual publications, 240 of them, and you're required to read them, evaluate them, study them, etc. You will be an expert in this system when you are done. Okay, we have a diplomate program, a postgraduate uh, program for chiropractors. Please consider taking that course with us. Uh, for more information on that, go to idealspine.com and check that out. The other thing is, we're trying to get more awareness for spine disorders and deformities from a conservative healthcare perspective. That means from a non-surgical perspective when the patient does not require surgical interventions. If it's a chiropractic case, we want to document it, we want to study it, we want to investigate it, we want to see how our work improves the health and well-being of different types of patient populations with different spine disorders and deformities. We have a research organization and we've published more than 240 scientific papers in the peer-reviewed literature. We have a team of not just chiropractors, but a host of professionals around the world in multiple disciplines, including orthopedics, general practice. We've worked with neurosurgeons, we've worked with physical therapists, we've worked with radiologists and a variety of PhDs from a variety of disciplines from statistics to engineering to math. I'm gonna ask you to consider supporting our organization, Chiropractic Biophysics Nonprofit. Go to our website, cbpnonprofit.com. You'll see what we're all about. We're a true 501c3 nonprofit registered organization. If you would like to support us, we take donations through PayPal. We also uh, are set up on Amazon Smile. So go into Amazon Smile and link Chiropractic Biophysics Nonprofit to your Amazon Smile purchases and we get a half a percent of your purchases back from Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything. So please consider supporting our organization so we can improve the health and well-being of people out there through quality conservative rehabilitation chiropractic care. Thank you for your time and attention.